We don't talk enough about security here on the channel, but think of this video as a checkup for your device safety and privacy. I'm talking about security settings that you should go. Yes, I'm talking to you. You should go and check right now. You're probably not using them. So yeah, let's get into it. Do you like cool things though? I like cool things and we try to make cool things. So do the cool thing and join our team by hitting that subscribe button. It really helped me out and it'd help you out hopefully in the future as well. Cheers. Here's the deal. I don't know why, but most of the best security features on your Android phone probably aren't going to be enabled by default. Don't complain to me though. I'm actually on your side as I recently left the hotel and forgot about my phone. I left it in the hotel room. So I actually had to delve deep into some of these recently, but it had me thinking about what you can and what you can't do. Basic, intermediate, and well, there's none of the expert stuff here, but here's a few things I think you should at least think about or think about enabling. Let's start with the easiest and the most obvious right away. That's find my device or find hub as it's now known. Again, do not ask me why, but it's not set up by default on Android phones. The whole point of this function is to help you retrieve or locate a last phone. It makes absolutely no sense to me that it isn't instantly activated during that initial device onboarding process, but it isn't. In fact, Google, if you're watching this, you can have that free tip. Add it to that initial device setup procedure, and I think a lot of people will be very, very happy. Wish list aside, you will need to go and manually download or open the Find Hub application on your phone before you're able to track the device itself. What you need to do is once you've opened it, just sign into the Google account associated with your device. Then it should be visible on the global map based upon the last location it was spotted or connected to a network. To access that from a desktop, you can go and sign into, I think it's Android Find My Device. Just search for that, you'll find the website. Sign into the Google account associated with the device and you should be able to see that on a Google map or the last location that it was spotted on a Google map. The newest and most interesting Android security feature is theft protection though. And I think getting your phone stolen is it's a horrible experience if you ever experienced it. It's just it's not just that the phone itself is valuable or that you've lost the phone. Everything else on your device gives thieves the opportunity to potentially extract more money from you, your accounts, or maybe even your contacts. And that's why I think this is a really good option. Like lots of things on Android, this is completely optional, which again, I, I like that it's optional, but at the same time, it seems a bit silly that it doesn't prompt you to do so. This works by using on-device sensors and hardware to determine if someone snatches your phone right out of your hand when the phone is unlocked and this is active. So it turns on and locks your phone, keeping things safe. You could mitigate this by using a wrist strap or something like that of case, but not everyone wants one of those. Yeah, you don't want to be carrying around your phone on a lanyard as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Theft detection is not a foolproof option though. If someone takes your phone while unlocked and then just really slowly walks away, they will still be able to access the unprotected on-device files, providing they can keep your phone unlocked. And I think that's where you will want another option from this section to be enabled. Offline device unlock is that option. Obviously, a lot of thieves will instantly remove a SIM card from a phone so that you can't track it on Find My Device. To mitigate that, there are a few things you should enable in this theft detection setting. The first is offline device lock, as I noted. When active, your phone is able to determine when a connection has been lost to Wi-Fi or a data network and automatically lock itself. You can't access or do anything until another connection is made though. But if you get your phone back, you just enter a pin or passcode and it will work just like normal. So in the off chance you happen to get the phone back, at least you have a bit of a fail safe. And related to that find my device or find hub function is the ability to remotely lock your phone if you do misplace it. This is a way to keep any precious on-device files away from anyone that might find your phone or might have taken your phone from you. Theft protection does offer more robust sets of controls here, but it can't hurt to have a few more layers of security with your Android phone, at least in my eyes. And when active, Remote Lock just lets you enter your phone number at android.com forward slash lock to send your phone to the screen lock. It must be online though, so it's important you do this ASAP which of course, in an instance like this, you might not think to do. Sadly, you're no, not able to lock your phone using this method, or you're only able to lock your, method, your phone via this method two times per day, as it were. So yeah, twice a day, you can check this and lock your phone remotely if it does ping a cell tower or a Wi-Fi network. So I wouldn't call Google Play Protect a foolproof way to keep your rogue apps under control, but it's a neat option that I think will attempt to at least detect dodge applications on your phone should they be installed or pre-installed by default. The Play Store basically powers this. It means you can scan your Android phone for any apps that might be harmful or pose a risk to on-device security. Usually apps are scanned in the background without you actually needing to do anything. If you use the Play Store, 
but you can initiate it manually if you feel the need to do so. Just head to the Play Store, tap your profile icon, play protect, and then scan. It takes a few seconds and any flagged apps will be highlighted and you'll be able to remove them. It might not work with any applications you've downloaded from third-party app stores, or it might flag them. I haven't actually seen this on my devices. So if you use stores like Aurora, F-Droid, or just sideload APKs yourself from websites, you might not get this working correctly. So bear that in mind. If you are hoping for full device security, you're going to have to be doing a little bit of the work yourself there. I get this is a really helpful setting for some people, but you probably don't want someone being able to see each individual character being typed out when you're entering passwords on your phone. Some phones will have this disabled by default, but I do think it's definitely worth checking. What you want to do is head to settings, security and privacy, more security settings and show passwords or show passwords while typing. Just disable it if you want an extra layer of privacy because effectively it will obscure your passcode no matter what you're typing on your keyboard or your pin key, pin key access, whatever it is. Yeah, basically it'll give you that extra layer of security. And lock, I think lockdown mode is a great option because before we had lots of these other controls I mentioned, lockdown mode was one of the cornerstones of Android security, which is ridiculous to say out loud. It works by preventing biometric authentication circumvention, if I can even say that word, enable it and you will be able to put in a pin or passcode or you will need to put in a pin or passcode when you unlock your device itself. The fingerprint scanner or face unlock won't work. My biggest gripe though with lockdown mode is that it is a one-time activation. So you'll need to enable it every single time you need it. And in tandem with other locking permissions, you can make it work well or you can use it as a bit of a last ditch protection method. It should be available if you long press the power button or long press the, I think it's power up and power button on some devices and tap lockdown mode. The next time you try to unlock, you'll have to enter your pin or your passcode. I think a really simple way to get on top of security is to check app permissions really regularly. There are lots of apps that will do things like access your location, maybe even your microphone or your camera, all doing so potentially in the background without you explicitly knowing save some mapping or rideshare apps like uber i'm gonna ask a question does ebay really need to know your exact location well i think no it doesn't and there are lots of other apps like it on the play store although i would say this is not explicitly android security it's more personal security there is a whole section dedicated to this in your phone just go through to the notifications and the permission sections and change app settings to stop apps from tracking you without your permission i think this is a really sensible thing to do if you are using lots of apps on your phone as they will ask for precise location data, another location and hardware data that you probably do not need to give them as they will work just fine as is. And another default setting in Android is for app notifications and messages to be fully displayed on your lock screen, whether you like it or not. For the most part, I think that's probably gonna be fine and it's great for glanceability if you do wanna see what people have said to you or what an email or message says. That said, I think you might have a two-factor authentication code arrive or something similarly sensitive that you really don't want people to see or read, especially if you're in an office setting for environment for argument's sake. In that case, I think you should control what apps are able to show on the lock screen yourself. You can do this on an app by app basis or just have a global block on all lock screen content. Just head to your device notification section in settings to set up or tweak how you see fit and effectively give you an extra layer of protection that you didn't already know that you needed. And one thing that often shocks me out there is how few people out there have emergency contacts set up on their phones. You might have favorites, but think about it. If the worst were to happen and someone needs to call you or one of your friends or relatives, could you provide the exact details from memory? I'd wager in 95% of cases out there, you probably couldn't. So I think setting up emergency contacts is probably something you didn't even think of and you probably should do right away. It's not an Android security control per se, but it's still worth enabling using if the worst were to happen. And I think you might want to also add an option to add data or information, contact information to your lock screen. If you're happy to do that, that might also be something to do as well. So save going alt tinfoil hat and using a dumb phone. I think these simple options are not going too in depth. I've kept this pretty lightweight, might help you at least get a little more security from your phone. I think it's bonkers, as I say at the start of this video, that most of these aren't activated during device setup or even prompted randomly during your general usage of your phone to you, for you to get a little bit more protected. But yeah, it is what it is. I don't know why that seems to be the case. What do you personally do though to increase your on-device security and your personal security as well? I find, find that pretty interesting. Tell me down in the comment sections below and hopefully these basic options have helped you out even just a little bit. Cheers for watching though and I'll speak to you in the next one.